And Justine, you um, posted a, a great uh, paragraph from a book that, that I think you were reading. Um, what's it called? Family Fortunes. Is that right? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really like this a lot. And so, uh, Michelle, you were describing, you know, at your Shabbat table when Cameron, um, he reads the Proverbs 31 blessing over you. And um, we've had that practice as well. Um, and we're trying to, I'm always trying to figure out how, how do you come into your identity as a, as a matriarch? And, um, and so this, this is really interesting though. Proverbs 31 woman is, is, a, is really, it is the, it is the uh, depiction of, of the, of the biblical matriarch. Um, this woman is clearly older um, and she is working, but it's always through the, the household. And, uh, and so a lot of people have never even seen what a matriarch looks like. I, I just was looking, I was kind of interacting with somebody on, on, on Twitter, on X, who was saying that it's so dangerous to tell women to stay at home and care for children, because when they turn like 45, they'll have nothing to do. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is one of the problems. And this is one of the things I think we like to talk a lot about here at family teams. And that is that, man, your, your world, if you're, if you have nothing to do by the time you turn 45, um, then you are taking a different pathway than certainly we describe and what's being described in scripture. Um, the, the sort of very isolated nuclear family that tries to uh, launch their kids out at 18 and, and really pushes all of their entire family into a dispersion. Um, and, and then the wife and mother sits at home with nothing to do. Um, that, that is, that is a very, that, that is not the vision at all that you get from scripture. Um, and so, uh, we can talk, kind of dive into this, but I think that this depiction that um, comes from this book about sort of what the matriarch is doing in contrast to what oftentimes we think of as sort of the 1950s housewife, um, I think is important to, to look at. So I'll read this and then Justin, I'd love to get your your take on this, what, what this stirred up for you. But um, he writes here, the matriarch of the truly wealthy family is not like the housewives you see on reality TV shows. She's not a big gossip or a social climber. A matriarch is not a trophy wife. She doesn't spend her time focused on herself. She's not a big consumer of products. Instead, she's a producer of capable, confident children. She focuses on her children, making sure that they are emotionally provided for, that they are well-educated, capable individuals. She instil instills in them a sense of duty to themselves and to the family. The matri matriarch must be able to, and then he gives this bullet list, one, Share in the family culture and be capable of passing it along. Indeed, she must play the leading role in creating it. Uh, two, be capable of providing a stable home environment, even when the family is on the move. Three, understand and support the wealth building strategies of the family. Four, support socially the family objectives, which could include entertaining customers, clients, associates, learning foreign languages, managing contacts with friends, relatives, business associates. Five, master complex tax and trust issues, not to mention subtle investment issues, and six, be emotionally mature and confident and have the depth to avoid getting distracted, which is not easy these days. All right, so um, yeah, we, we love looking at depictions of matriarchs, and so I'm curious, Justine, what did, what, how did this strike you? I just felt like it gave such a beautiful picture of like the high and holy calling that is motherhood, that often, like you said, it's not depicted that way, it's more um lazy and just consumptive rather than um producing and being very intentional within your home and your children and towards your husband um so i just really appreciated like wow when you read that you realize there's a lot that goes into motherhood um that is devalued or not even talked about at all and i just appreciated that yeah yeah, so much like good detail. April, you're in the midst of this transition. So we talk a lot about the the sort of progression from maiden to mother to matriarch. And so, yeah, what what are some things that you've thought through? Anything in that paragraph sort of reminiscent of of things that you're working on or you're seeing in this transition? Yeah, for sure. I I do feel like um it's like an additional description of what we see in Proverbs 31. Um, the idea of understanding like the financial, the economic engine of the home, um, being involved in that to some degree. Um, and that can change 
you know, through the years. And then as you're expanding, there becomes more um, to either take on or to navigate. And I feel like um, you just have to live a certain amount of years for, <laughs> for these things to happen. And so it's really neat to see God's progression of maiden to mother to matriarch. Um, I mean, you might feel like the matriarch when you're younger, if you have had to kind of become the Abraham and Sarah for your family. Like if you feel like you're starting from scratch or starting, uh, you know, needing to kind of break off a lot of old things and do things the way that your family maybe didn't do. So you might feel like a younger matriarch before you become a grandma, you know, at that point. But with me actually becoming a grandma recently, a year ago, um, it sent us on all these like different conversations like, wow, this is so crazy to see how this is. Um, the timing is all lining up and like all of these different things. And I think even just like, oh, I'll learn a foreign language. It just hap happens to be in there. Like if your husband's dealings are from afar, then you're just going to pick up on that foreign language. Well, I'm not sure what mom that's like in the process of like still birthing and nursing and recovering is probably also going to just take up a language, you know? So um, that just kind of shows it's like maybe life after those things. And um, I think when I look now at the years I have left on this planet, which of course is up to the Lord, I don't know how many they are, but they could be a good amount. And um, so seeing what you can do and just reflecting on, on how many years, like, Jeremy and I just had our 26th anniversary. Like, wow, 26 years. That's so long. But then when you look at my in-laws, they've been married 56 years. And it's like, wow, that's so much longer. So mm -hmm. it's like there is so much life to live and there is so much to take on and so much, so many ways to expand. And as a matriarch, that gets me really excited about um, what's to come. And we don't even really know what that's going to mean. We don't know how many grandkids we're going to have. We don't know how, like, how far apart they're going to be or what genders they're going to be or um, where they're going to be living. And so um, what that's going to mean for us. But the fact that we, I kind of open up my, the continuation of surrender, like Michelle said, like at the very beginning, you're like laying yourself down so much. There's this um, kind of self-sacrifice, which of course the world hates, but this idea that Jesus gives us the example as a believer of laying down himself for others. And so we can do that in our motherhood in so many practical ways, and then it can continue on into matriarch. It's not, I'm not viewing the matriarch season as, um, a time to just finally, you know, stop caring and be able to put my feet up. And all of a sudden I don't really care what happens to my kids. Like that just, is impossible to think about. So the idea that like, I'm willing to still pour out my life for you and, um, practically. So if I have a pregnant daughter, I'm gonna, you know, shave her legs for her when she's eight months pregnant <laughs> or paint her toenails, or I'm gonna, you know, watch the, wash the dishes when her belly gets so big that the sink is really hard. Like those kinds of things just to come alongside and encourage, um, a lot of it is just so practical. Yeah. A lot, you know, alongside the kind of big picture philosophical stuff. Right. Yeah. It is very practical. And that, that's where I think that, I think that the, the way that certainly our lifestyle is and, and what we're advocating for, and we're seeing for families who think about their family as a multi-generational team, the role of, of the mother and then the transition to matriarch, your job just gets much more complicated and more multifaceted, right? Because you have the wisdom to handle that level of complexity. Far from like, oh, all of a sudden now I've lost my job and now the kids have, have left the nest. Uh, we don't believe in empty nesting. We don't believe that the family is a nest. We think the family is a team. And so what you find yourself doing, if you're on this pathway, when you become a grandmother, is that you are now at the top of a, of a growing organization with lots of economic implications. Um, we've got multiple businesses and assets that April and I get to manage together and working together. You've got, you know, now we have two married children and they're starting businesses um, and having kids. And then we, you know, so there's, there's the level of complexity, like is, is, 
it's like, it's very stretching. I know April, you would, you know, it's like every day I feel like you're being stretched and you, you have multiple degrees and, you know, you could be you know, using all of those talents in other ways, but you've really focused those talents on our household. And what a lot of people I think are hearing this, you have to, you have to understand that we're, what we're talking about is a household. Um, and if you're not building a household, if you're not building your family to be a household, that it involves things like economic engines that are going through the household, then I know this might sound strange, like, oh, what, what is the role that, what, what, are you, what are you exactly doing practically? And there are like the small details of practical things that, that have to be worked out. And then there are some really big picture things that we're constantly working on together. April and I have, like, we have multiple meetings a week. We, we meet with, you know, various, you know, different entities that we're, we're managing. We've got a nonprofit and multiple businesses and you know, real estate assets. And then we've got all of our kids that are growing all those things. And so there's so much to, to growing a household and preparing our, our children to grow a household. Um, so yeah, there's a lot going on there. And part of, you know, when you hear me, even in the intro, I kind of promoted, um, you know, Chris's business and Cameron's, you know, his YouTube channel, because I, I just see that I don't, somebody might hear that and go, Oh, why would you even mention what their husbands are doing? It's like, I don't think of it that way at all. This is what their families are doing. Like, these are things that are supporting their families. And that, you know, their wives are going to be a part of supporting in whatever way, you know, that they, they can, but this is, this is just part of the whole deal is that the economics, um, uh, are an integrated part of the household, the businesses and assets that are owned by the family are nested underneath the family. They're not some kind of separate individual identity being chased by one member of the family. And so that, that's a very different way to, to think about it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm curious, Michelle, for you, as you think about like, as you're moving closer and closer to getting into um, the matriarch stage, what are some things, elements of this that are that are uh, kind of standing out to you? Yeah, well, <laughs> speaking of gardening and my husband's channel, um, I just keep getting this visual from the garden, which is helpful for me and maybe it's helpful for listeners today. Because when we plant seeds, seeds are already <laughs> designed by the Lord to reproduce. And so, you know, when we planted our kale plants last year, We've been enjoying the fruit, you know, we've been enjoying the kale over and over. And, um, but right now they're starting to seed, they're sending out the flowers and the seeds are forming and pretty soon they'll fall to the ground to reproduce. And while April was sharing about motherhood and just the different stages, I just was thinking of how God's embedded that same process in the garden um, where there's, you know, one seed starts it and then a plant emerges. And you get to enjoy, you know, the person enjoys the, the fruit of it. And there becomes a point where like actually for kale, once it starts to flower and there's seeds, the leaves that are remaining become bitter. Like you can't eat them. They're super, very bitter. Um, but it's because the, the plant is using all of its energy to reproduce quality seeds. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I feel like that's a, a, a picture of, motherhood where you know we're at that stage of you know almost two teenagers and just really like trying to get them in a position to like go to their next stage you know where they're and it I don't know so <laughs> if that makes sense um it's just kind of cool to think about how or there's other things in nature that point to that same thing there has yeah. to be some of laying down of their you know the life in order for for the next to thrive. No, that was great. I, I, there's a life, there's a life cycle that you have to embrace. And I think this is really intimidating for people in our culture because you're only allowed to ever be a maiden in our culture. You see someone like Madonna in her, is she in her seventies now? Like still dressing and acting like she's in the maiden stage. It's, it's never appropriate to just say, no, now I'm a mother. And so I'm in a new phase. Now I'm a matriarch. You know, this is, I think this is what's so disturbing about what's going on with Taylor Swift. We were talking about earlier, which is, um, you know, the fact that, you know, it was cute when she was in her twenties, you know, like, Oh, I'm trying to date. I'm trying to find the right one. Are you still trying to find the right, right one? Like, like and now her latest album apparently has gotten a lot, you know, a lot more cynical. Yeah. That, that, like this is going to happen if you don't make those transitions properly. It's really important that we tell women this, they don't know this. They're, they're really taught. You need to constantly fight for that maiden stage and just hold on to it by the, you know, by your fingernails, um, and, and into your 50s, 60s, 70s. It's like, man, how is this helping women? You know, it's like, this is not realistic at all. This is not helpful. Um, and we need older women to say, Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're like, it's okay to make this transition. You know, you're not losing something that 
that isn't taking you into a better place. But that's the reason why we need people like going back to our previous conversation where, you know, we have to be able to say out loud that these transitions are good. And there have to be men who are saying, I'm not just interested in um, going from one maiden to another maiden. I want, I want to marry a woman who is making the transitions and we're doing it together. She's becoming a mother. I'm becoming a father. She becomes a matriarch. I become a patriarch. Like that, those are really beautiful transitions in a family. And, and I think that they're, they're the pathway for maximal thriving for, for the vast majority of, of men and women. 